Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, to Mayor Starr. Let's hear it for Mayor Gary Starr, the Dean, the Dean of Mayors in the state of Ohio. Mayor Starr, it's an honor to be with you on this platform as someone who's had the opportunity to work with you over the years. I am so grateful to be here in your community to launch this campaign for governor of the state of Ohio. Thank you, Mayor Starr. To the distinguished public officials who are here, thank you for your presence. And we owe a debt of gratitude to uh, Reverend Macon for helping to set the tone of this campaign with prayer. We're so grateful. Please thank Reverend Macon for his presence here. To the young people who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance, they're our future. They're dedicated to America, and we are dedicated to them. Thank you. To members of my family who are here, I am so grateful for your presence. Uh, you're the reason why I've hung in there. You're the reason why I get up in the morning and when all of us know what the love of a family means, it means everything. So the Kucinich family, uh, the, the ones that are uh, here in this audience, let's hear it for them. Thank you. And it, is, and it is very true that I would not be here at this moment, at this place, but for the support, assistance, uh, guidance, love, everything from an incredible woman, a brilliant woman, who almost 13 years ago uh, walked into my life and transformed it. My darling wife, Elizabeth. Yeah. I stand before you today as someone who, like many of you, has had his share of ups and downs, victories and defeats. Throughout my life, my guiding star has been one of service to others. Any of us who would endeavor to lead must first serve. As a young person, I began scrubbing floors in Holy Names, St. Aloysius, and St. Coleman Catholic schools to pay the book bills for myself and my brothers and sisters. I've been a stock boy, a golf caddy at Beachmont Country Club, a high school sports correspondent for the St. John Kansas Jayhawks, a plain dealer newspaper copy boy, a Wall Street Journal newspaper proofreader. I've been an orderly, a surgical technician at St. Alexis Hospital, a college student at Cleveland State University and then Case Western Reserve University, a member of Cleveland City Council, the clerk of courts of the city of Cleveland, the mayor of Cleveland. I was a community college speech instructor, a college teacher in communications at Cleveland State, and a guest lecturer at many colleges. I operated my own communications and video production firm, and then went on to be an Ohio State Senator. And yes, people at Channel 8 in Cleveland know that I was on air with them. I've been a, also someone who has uh, had a, a radio talk show. And, uh, you know, of course, I went on from State Senate to being a member of the United States Congress for 16 years. And also, I thank you. In Congress, I was a driving force for an end to war, for health care for all, for universal pre-kindergarten, for workers' rights, for environmental protection, food safety, and for making Wall Street accountable through my chairmanship of the Domestic Policy Subcommittee. I ran. I ran twice for president. And when I left Congress, I was, I, I was given an opportunity to be a contributor at the Fox News Network. Today, I'm an author and a consulting policy analyst. This has been my journey. It's been one of service, one of integrity, one of a willingness to stand up and to speak out, no matter the odds, no matter the power of the interest to be challenged. Everything in my career has been about giving everything I have and everything I am to this community. Years ago, in Cleveland, as America's youngest mayor, I had a moment of truth and consequence. 
A major bank tried to force me to sell Cleveland's electric system, MuniLight, to its private utility partner, then known as the Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company. The bank used as leverage the fact that the city had $15 million in loans from the previous administration coming due in December of 1978. I was told the banks would renew the city's credit and even give the city $50 million in new loans, but only if I sold Muni Light, a system which had existed for generations, providing cheaper electricity to Clevelanders and inexpensive lighting to the city. Now keep in mind, I had already reduced city spending 10% while improving services. I offered the banks an entire range of city resources to pay off the debt. They refused. They tried to blackmail me and the city. They would accept nothing less than Muni Light, the sale of which would have created an electric monopoly that would have forced up electric rates for business, residential customers, and the city. Now, my political career was on the line. Cleveland Trust tried to blackmail me into a decision of either default and the annihilation of my political career, or the sale of Muni Light and the acceptance of $50 million in credit, which would have put the taxpayers into further debt. Now, if I had capitulated to their blackmail, I would have shown then I could be the establishment's boy, their corrupt insider, another wheeler dealer, and they would have rallied around me to become governor of Ohio in 1982. When I turned down their blackmail, the bank put the city into default. I lost the next election. It took me 50 15 years to make a full political comeback. But when the people realized I put my career on the line and said no to the giveaway of Muni Light, and they realized that the public saved hundreds of millions of dollars on electric bill and on their taxes, they said, come on back. <laughs> so that That same person, battle scars and all, is before you today with a wealth of experience, no less ready to stand up and speak out, to take on corrupt interests on behalf of the people of Ohio, ready to be the voice that bridges left and right, a clear voice, unafraid to call things as I see them. I remember where I came from, and I dedicate this endeavor to an inner city family of nine, a mother, a father, and a family which grew to seven children and lived in 21 different places in 17 years. This family suffered through daily physical and mental stress, through economic uncertainty and violence, often not knowing if they would have a roof over their head, adequate food on the table, be able to pay the bills, clothe seven children, be able to send them to school in neighborhoods where gunshots were part of the music of the night. Well, the children slept on torn mattresses with windows stuffed with newspapers to keep out the wind and the cold, the mother and father would count pennies on an old white chipped metal tabletop to come up with enough money to pay the utility bills. As the pennies dropped, one by one, a sound, click, 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 as they hit the table. Now, how do I know this story? Because this was the story of my mother and father, my brothers and sisters, and me. This was my childhood story. And today, it is the story of many Ohio children and their parents. And I can hear those pennies dropping again. Click, click, click. As they hit the tables across the state, people are struggling. According to a US Census report published a little over a year ago, between 25 and 60% of Ohio's children are living in poverty in 95 Ohio cities. That so many children in so many places in Ohio are living in poverty constitutes a moral crisis 
of enormous dimensions. Childhood poverty is a threat to the future of this state. It is a threat to the future of America. As Mayor Starr knows, no community in Ohio, no matter how affluent, no matter how well managed, can afford to look the other way while children live in families teetering on the brink of financial ruin, unable to attain adequate health care, education, or job opportunities. We cannot and must not look the other way while Ohio has one of the highest rates in America for opioid, heroin-related deaths, one of the highest rates of infant mortality, particularly children of color, one of the highest rates of incarceration, the sixth highest rate of food insecurity. You've seen those lines at food pantries. They're growing longer as the state cut food assistance and even cut Meals on Wheels, destroying one social program after another to give tax breaks to the wealthiest citizens. And now, in the dead of winter, we have people standing at freeway exits, begging for money, for food, begging for work, begging to survive. 17 of Ohio cities have poverty rates, total poverty rates, that are higher than 30%. One out of every seven Ohioans, about 1.7 million people, live at or below the poverty level. This includes families who once owned businesses, held good paying jobs, had health care, had nice homes, until the economy crashed in a maelstrom of corruption. I know the deep uncertainty of people worrying every day about their jobs, their wages, their benefits, their health care, the health and education of their children, and the safety of their communities. This book, As Ohio Goes, is worth reading, and it's written by a local author by the name of Rana Corey, because she has identified these economic crises that have occurred since the collapse of the economy. She quotes the writer George Packer, who talks about an unwinding that's occurred, about what's happened and people losing every, all the security they thought they had. While drug overdoses are epidemic, babies are literally dying, children are living in poverty and violence, it's consuming neighborhoods across the state. The government of the state of Ohio has in re recent years stripped local communities of over a billion dollars in needed revenue, stripped public schools of billions of dollars in needed revenue, stripped funds from Ohio early learning and child care, and canceled all day kindergarten. Now, what's happening in Columbus? Well, the state's government attention has been elsewhere. No bid contracts to politically favored IT companies. Political payoffs masked as speaking fees. Tens of millions of dollars in education funds stolen, and I say stolen, by for-profit interests while state officials look the other way while receiving large campaign contributions. The state attorney general's office using special counsel appointments as a political fundraising racket. Payday lenders, that vicious racket of payday lending, giving campaign contributions to forestall protection for consumers. And then there's the attempt to crush workers' rights again and again in an effort to drive down wages for the financial benefit of a few. I say that every adverse condition in this state can be tied to political corruption of one kind or another. This state has literally given away billions of dollars in tax breaks while destroying programs essential for health and education. You cannot have communities where some people are living in third world conditions unless the politics of the state itself reflects or tolerates deep corruption. This is the moment. This is the moment. This is the moment when people must take back their government. This is the moment when there must be a shift of power from an uncaring, unresponsive state government in Columbus to the power of we the people. 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 When it's claimed and when it's expressed with strength, with experience, and with fearlessness. That is why, that is why today 
I announce I am running for governor of Ohio to make state government subject to the power of we the people. To make state government subject to the power of who? To make state government subject to the power of who? To establish the principles of economic justice, prosperity, and opportunity as Ohio's purpose of state. To build anew our roads, our bridges, our schools, our hospitals. To grow Ohio's commercial, industrial, and information economy with real programs to create a new vitality, true prosperity, jobs for all, health care for all, education for all, teaching and tapping creativity, empowering self-reliance and promoting entrepreneurship. People need a hand up, not a hand out. But don't tell the people to pull themselves up by their bootstraps while you are stealing their boots. So today I'm setting forth goals, and I'm setting forth specific goals, and I want you to be with me through this because these goals are goals that are workable, they are actionable, and they're goals that together we can accomplish. I'm setting forth specific goals to achieve a vibrant, equitable, sustainable, inclusive Ohio aimed at eradicating poverty, yes. providing jobs for every able-bodied person, yes. providing opportunities and incentives to work to achieve prosperity for all. So let us begin. We begin with rebuilding Ohio. I have been calling for the renewal of America's infrastructure for years. America's is relying on an infrastructure that was built in the 1930s during the New Deal of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. That was the New Deal and it was good. It's time in Ohio for a real deal. As governor, as governor of Ohio, I'll lead the way. We'll work with business, industry, labor, city leaders, and community organizations to repair, rebuild, and renew Ohio's infrastructure We'll put Ohioans back to work rebuilding Ohio. We'll create good paying Davis-Bacon jobs for skilled trades. We'll renew and rebuild our roads, our bridges, our water systems, our sewer systems, our parks, our recreation areas, jobs, good wages, economic progress, business investment. Ohio will be the place to visit, to locate to, to live, and to do business. Rebuilding and creating jobs means what? It means power to the people. What does it mean? Power to the people. Ohio Broadband. Now listen to this. We have been grow we have seen, all of us have seen these growing broadband monopolies, which threaten the economic growth of our state and which widen the digital divide. Ohio is going to answer the call of the 21st century. I will soon announce a plan working with digital utility and consumer advocates to establish a new nonprofit public utility in Ohio, a new broadband service, which will dramatically reduce the cost of broadband for all Ohio residents and businesses, provide a powerful high-speed platform for business growth while establishing net neutrality. <laughs> Ohio broadband means power to we the people. What does it mean? Ohio business. Ohio will invest in infrastructure, health care, education, broadband, and other areas to enable Ohio businesses to thrive. I want to create a high wage, high profit, socially productive, and economically dynamic state with the help of Ohio's business leaders. And I will call on them to participate in this effort. We can no longer look to yesterday's ideological battles as guides to our future. We must be open to creating new alliances, new partnerships, new forums, and new possibilities. I will seek out the advice of Ohio's business leaders and America's visionaries and leading innovators. Growing Ohio economy means what? Power to we the people. Ohio. High skill, high wage, and profitable. Ohio recently increased its minimum wage to $8.30. Now that's a step in the right direction, but it's not enough. My goal will be to see the minimum wage in Ohio 
increased by 50% to $12.50 by the end of my first term. Ohio, Ohio, Ohio must strive to have a high skill and high wage and profitable economy. Higher wages means power to we the people. Ohio farmers. Now agriculture is the foundation of a healthy economy. Farmers are the backbone of human health and, in, and they are our environmental stewards. We will engage farmers in an inclusive opportunity to increase their bottom line. Ohio farmers will have a friend in the governor's office. In the coming weeks, I will announce an unprecedented plan to bring farmers, scientists, and our university talent together to enable Ohio's farmers to profit from ecologically friendly farming so they can grow wholesome, nutritious, healthy food, which will strengthen Ohio's position as a leading agricultural export state. Regenerative agriculture is the path to carbon sequestration and the restoration of our global climate. And I, want, and I want to add that this is something that I'm going to be calling upon the special expertise and knowledge of a woman who has traveled the world and lectured on these issues who just happens to be my wife, Elizabeth. So, <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> now, regenerative agricultural practice was, will mean that farmers can reduce expenditures on agricultural inputs, help boost soil health, reduce exposure to chemicals, limit damaging nutrient runoff into our lakes and streams, improving our ability to provide clean drinking, drinking water. Ohio's farmers will be compensated for being on the front lines of climate mitigation. We're also going to explore removing barriers to growing industrial hemp. Prosperous farmers mean what? What do prosperous farmers mean? Power to we, the people. Consumer protection. Now in 1972, I was instrumental in creating the Cleveland Office of Consumer Affairs, which still exists today. While the federal government moves to gut consumer protection, we will restore it in Ohio. Under my leadership, the state will create the Ohio Office of Consumer Protection, an accessible, transparent, and statutorily independent one-stop shop to protect the financial interests of Ohio consumers and legitimate businesses alike. Ohio consumer protection means power to we, the people. Ohio health care. In this campaign, I'm going to convene all parties to bring forward a comprehensive plan to provide every Ohioan with access to affordable, low-cost, basic medical, mental health, dental, and prescription drug care with a, with a new emphasis with a new emphasis on regenerative health care, disease prevention, diet, and complementary therapies. We must address drug addiction as a health crisis rather than simply as a criminal justice matter. My plan will reduce the health care burden of businesses and industry. It will save businesses money, create a healthier workforce, and protect families from economic ruin when illness strikes. We will reverse the process of, of the closing of community hospitals, reopen closed hospitals, and build new health facilities in rural areas. Health care for all means power for we, the people. Education and the arts, starting with Ohio college education. Every young person here knows, talk to their friends, our youngest generation looks with trepidation to the future. They're stuck in low-wage jobs if they're employed, unable to afford college, or burdened with extraordinary educational debt. In the first phase of my college educational program, I'll work with budget experts, student advocates, and economists to make it possible for every young Ohioan to be able to attend a two-year college tuition-free yeah as a first step towards a four-year free college plan. Now, assuring the dream of a college education means what? Power to we, the people. Let's look at the Ohio student loans. 
The default rate for students 10 years ago was about 40%. Then students were only borrowing about a third of what they're borrowing today, when the default rate is approaching 50%. One group that I've talked to says that they calculated that as many as 800,000 young Ohioans could be facing default on their student loans, or they're already on the way. Ohio is one of the most expensive states from where a, college, a student can receive a college education. Ohio currently ranks 16 highest in college student loan debt. We're going to develop an innovative program to help young Ohioans get out from under the mountain of debt in which many are buried. Protecting the financial future of young Ohioans means what? Power, Power to we the, the people. people. Let's talk about Ohio elementary and secondary education. <clears throat> Public education, <clears throat> public education is in a state of continued financial crisis. The state legislature has not kept its responsibility to establish and to finance a thorough and efficient system of public education, which was mandated by the DeRoff court decision. Worse, Ohio schools, public schools, are losing more than a billion dollars a year to charters run by for-profit operators without taxpayers having any say at all. Our schools go to local taxpayers, they need help, and what's happening is the people vote a levy and then right away for-profit operators are glomming onto it and they're taking away from the public school districts. So what happens in public education? Cutbacks in teachers, staff, athletic programs, arts, drama, band, and other important school programs. It is time for a new direction in public education, where we preserve public edu educational funds, where we enable communities to vote whether they want local tax dollars to go to charter schools that partner with our public schools. We also need, by the way, to understand the underlying dissatisfaction with public schools and address those issues so that we can restore public confidence in public education. We must determine the best practices of charters which can be applied to public education. I will soon announce a statewide initiative working with teachers, parents, students, and educational advocates to protect public educational funding. Saving public education means power to we the people. Ohio arts. Ohio's already blessed with tremendous institutions in arts, poetry, literature, music, dance, dramatics, appreciation of diverse cultures, computer graphics, motion pictures. I intend to bring forward initiatives to enable the artists of this state to thrive, to make Ohio a center of creativity in the arts, a center for film production, a place of fun and festival and celebration. Supporting Ohio arts means Power to we the people. the people. Peaceful Ohio communities. I will endeavor to bring a healing hand to this state so that we can address violence and its causes. Two months before 9-11, I brought forth landmark legislation which would teach respect and mutuality in our schools to strengthen our children, to have the fortitude to, succe to successfully integrate nonviolent responses into their daily lives. Violence is not inevitable. It is a learned response. In this state, we have the economic, academic, social, medical, and spiritual resources to begin the transformation to a healthy, peaceful society. I'm going to enlist the help of ministers, social workers, medical personnel, and the media in beginning a dynamic, comprehensive approach to violence. Peaceful communities mean power to we, the people. Criminal justice. We must break the prison industrial complex and stop the waste of hundreds of millions of dollars to warehouse low-level violators. The wasting of taxpayers' money for the incarceration of nonviolent offenders must stop. We should be filling up our schools, not our jails. A, a, renewed, a renewed emphasis on rehabilitation and restitution, mandatory. We must offer nonviolent offenders reasonable and appropriate opportunities to rejoin society, to find jobs, to get an education, to become full productive citizens and have the right to vote. Those who have paid their debt to society should not have to continue to pay over and over and over. 
So, successful rehabilitation means? Power free the people. Let's talk about Ohio's drug policies. The Cleveland Veterans Administration Hospital has developed an innovative protocol for dealing with the opioid epidemic, which emphasizes a multidisciplinary approach to pain management. We can learn from this program, and Ohio must fund broader long-term treatment and insist that insurance companies do the same. Bringing people back from the edge of destruction from dangerous drugs means power to lead the people. Medical marijuana. Now, oh, I want to make it clear that Ohio will protect its constitutional right to dispense medical marijuana. We're going to. We will broaden the conversation towards decriminalization, legalization, and licensing to provide hundreds of millions of dollars in increased revenues to help the state, to help pay for our expanded health programs. And with the help, with the help of our congressional delegation, we'll make necessary changes in federal policy. New drug policies mean? Power to lead the people. Energy and water. Let's talk about clean water, air, and land. As governor, I'll make it a priority to safeguard the purity of our water, our lakes, our rivers and streams. I'll incentivize non-polluting industries and work to have the highest air quality standards of any state. I'll soon announce a program to protect the land and the water from the exploitation of fracking. Watch for this one. Protecting our environment means Lake Erie. The greatest threats to Lake Erie are agricultural runoff, algae blooms, the threat of bulk water removal, uh, the, wa the removal of uh, bulk removal of water, and the urgent need to assure the isolation from the biosphere of nuclear waste on U.S. and Canadian shores. Now we all know that Lake Erie is part of a chain of lakes constituting the largest supply of fresh water in the world. In concert with environmentalists, conservationists, those who fish and use the lake for recreation, I will present my plan to deal with protecting and conserving the natural resource of Lake Erie. Protecting our source of drinking water means power to lead the people. Clean energy. The state of Ohio will seek a new partnership with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and our colleges and universities to create an Ohio technology incubator for the development of new energy sources and applications which will enable the state of Ohio to take the lead in cutting edge energy technology while furthering the emerging wind and solar industries. Clean energy means power to lead the people. Transportation. We saw the news today. Our public transportation system here in town is struggling. Increased fares, cuts in service. The transit dependent population will have a friend in the governor's office. We'll work with local communities to help stabilize public transportation budgets and ensure fares are affordable, service and route miles are guaranteed for those who rely on public transportation to get to school, work, shopping, or health care. Supporting public transportation means power to lead the people. High speed rail. I intend to begin the most ambitious transportation network building program anywhere. It is long past time for Ohio to set a course for high speed rail which connects our cities, moves commerce, encourages tourism, saves energy, creates jobs, and enables us to connect with other states. High speed rail means power to the people. Ohio's airports and harbors. Major airlines have handicapped our state's economy. Everyone here in the room knows try to fly direct to cities out of Cleveland or other Ohio airports. Major airlines have limited routes and schedules. I intend to use the power of the governor's office to help cities negotiate a new deal with the airlines as a matter of top priority for Ohio's businesses. Ohio will once again become a prime destination, not a stopover. Our harbors and ports are vital to Ohio commerce. There are nine ports on Lake Erie and 16 terminals along the Ohio River. Ohio is the fourth largest maritime state by tonnage moved. We're going to invest in our ports and harbors, rebuild them and expand their operations. 
fully utilized airports and harbors mean? Local government. As Mayor Starr pointed out earlier, state government has deprived cities of anticipated revenue causing cutbacks in public health and safety. As a former councilman and a mayor, and I see members of council here, Councilwoman Brady and others, I understand the revenue needs of local communities. I intend to reverse the policy and restore the relationship, Mayor, between local communities and state government Stronger local governments mean power to we the people. Protecting public ownership in Ohio. Local communities become financially stressed. They turn to privatizing public facilities and services. I intend to help local communities put an end to that, end to privatization of public services in Ohio, just as I saved the people of Cleveland hundreds of millions of dollars to, when saving Muni Light, so too. We will save Ohio cities and taxpayers billions through stemming and reversing the tide of privatization. Public ownership means Our free people. political reforms. Let's talk about workers' rights. We must establish once and for all as a moral and political imperative the rights of workers, the right to join a union, the right to organize, the right to strike the right to collective bargaining, the right to decent wages and benefits, the right to a safe workplace, the right to a secure retirement, the right to participate in the political process. Now, I've helped upheld the rights of workers for generations. Under my leadership, no outside interest would dare, would dare bring forth the contemptuously named right to work laws which aim at destroying workers' organizations. It is not predatory monopolies which made America great, but the control of those forces and collective bargaining. Skilled labor can outperform slave labor, and Ohio will become a showplace to show the power of skilled laborers. Ohio workers' rights mean public financing of our elections. Ohio government is held captive by special interest groups, and dark money which buys public policy with campaign contributions. Those who say government does, you know, doesn't work, they're wrong. Government's working for somewhere. Not working for you, it's working for somebody. I intend to lead the way for public financing with many of you in this room. Public financing of state elections, we're going to enable our public officials to reclaim their civic souls and truly represent the people who elected them. Public financing of Ohio elections means ending gerrymandering. Oh yeah, here we are. If anyone, Mayor, you know, if anyone knows the injustice of the current redistricting system, it's the people of this area, this 10th congressional district, which I was proud to represent for 16 years, until, hear me, internal democratic politics sliced it up into four pieces. Today, state politicians once again would deny the people any voice in the mapping of congressional districts. As governor, I'll have a vote, and I'll assure that redistricting is fair and equitable to all without regard to political party. Gerrymandering robs people of their votes, their rights, and their power. Ending gerrymandering means Power to we, the people. <laughs> Volunteer Ohio. We're going to establish an Ohio Helps program where people from all walks of life and all ages will be able to use their skills to volunteer, to serve, to enrich the lives of others and enrich their own lives in giving to others, to lend a helping hand in a friendly Ohio way. Ohio Helps will tap the extraordinary human resource of the state to match those citizens who are ready to give of themselves to those who are in need. Encouraging volunteerism means power to we the people. My fellow Ohioans, this platform, power to we the people, is a can-do action plan. It is as unlimited in scope as the unlimited capacities of 11 million people who make up the state of Ohio. Each 
of the initiatives that I've outlined requires leadership. With your help, I can provide that leadership. Each of these initiatives requires bipartisan support. I can work with people on both sides of the aisle. I run as a Democrat, but I will govern from inclusion, not exclusion. I reject the politics of polarization through 16 years in Congress. I demonstrated an ability to work with people on both sides of the aisle to the benefit of our state and nation. Ask any Republican member of Congress with whom I served. Now, does government have the solution to all of society's problems? No way. I know of examples all too well where government has become a racket. But I also know its, its ability, its potential to inspire, to incentivize, to improve the lives of the people, to help drive economic progress for all. I've seen miracles when people come together, not only with Muni Light in Cleveland, but when thousands of people march to save community hospitals, and I see Dr. Lopez in this room here who marched with us to, to save hospitals. And you know, one of those hospitals in this area, as a result of people coming together, stands today, Richmond Heights, as a sign of power of the people. At, at this moment, while we're here in Middleburg Heights, in Massillon, Ohio, nurses and citizens have been in court to save their community hospital, and we're supporting them. Our steel mill in Cleveland, many of you will remember, it was shut down. There was one editorial cartoon that showed me giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to a dinosaur, right? That was <laughs> Mark the Steel Company, right? It's kind of a, you know, interesting thought. Um, but what happened? The community rose up. We saved thousands of jobs, and that mill is now the flagship of an integrated international steelmaking company. This is the power we have. I know what happens when people express their power. But first, you have to claim it. This election will be about giving the people of Ohio the opportunity to do just that with an exciting, dynamic, confident, can do winning approach with called power to we the people. <clears throat> this is how Ohioans can win. This is how I'll win in the Democratic primary and in the general election. And I'm and I'm in a unique position among all Democratic candidates for governor to bring back those to our party who left when our party abandoned them, those who voted against previous nominees for governor and president, we're going to bring them home. We're going to welcome people. We're going to give them a reason to come back and to vote Democrat, and I'll lead the way to do that. As we conclude, or rather as we begin this endeavor, I want you to Remember the motto of the state of Ohio. This is our state's motto. With God, all things are possible. Amen. We must never forget that behind the often vexing reality which politics presents, there stands spiritual potential, ready to be called upon to help us overcome any obstacles, to help us step forward to show people a new direction, to create new outcomes, and to achieve what others may believe is impossible. It is in the spirit that all things are possible that I enter this campaign for governor. Thank you. contribute, help us win this election, and we can do it. And, and once again, I give the program back to uh, this great mayor from Middleburg Heights. Let's hear it again for Mayor Gary Sarr.